If you would like to advertise on Sports Radio Birmingham, please email me at chris at sports-radio.co.uk. Well, it's been three long years and more since I left Brummagem. And when I came back home again to good old Brummagem, to St. Andrew's ground I had to go, but the blessed city had altered so that it filled my heart with grief and woe as I made my way through Brummagem. The market hall has come and gone in good old Brummagem. And Nelson's had to move along in dear old Brummagem. It seems as if the future will close down the station on Snow Hill And the bull rings now become Schweppesville They've changed the face of Brummagem Blues were in Division One when I left Brummagem But I come back and down they've gone in dear old Brummagem but now they've found a millionaire who has a little cash to spare. So Aston Villa had better beware, they're coming up fast up And it's Monday night, uh, 7.30. Welcome to Sports Radio Birmingham, broadcasted by the fans, for the fans. How you doing? Got a full house with us tonight. Uh, Chris. Good evening. Uh, GA on Hi buttons. Uh, we've got Ollie. Hi, everyone. And a little capo. Good evening. The Gabby Cabby. Okay, right on. My good self, all the way, all the way. And the one and only Helen. <laughs> <laughs> That's Capo's taxi driver. Uh, but in with us tonight, great to see yet another big name in the studio, the one and only Mr. Robert Hopkins! <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Robert. You've officially had the clap off the team. Everybody gets I'll it. Stop singing now. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good to uh, have you with us on a Monday night. Thanks for coming over, mate. No problem. All right. Okay. The sad news today. Obviously, we've got a report on the death of uh, uh, once Prime Minister, the Mrs. Baroness Margaret Thatcher. Whatever your political views were, uh, and I've seen all sorts on uh, on the internet today. Some of it quite harrowing. Um, got to remember, guys. That was still a life. It was still a lady. It was still a mom. It was still a person. No matter what. Keep your nastiness to yourself that's what i say don't Anybody else agree with me on that? the dead no, well why should you yeah. i mean i've just you know so, I, I, I just I lost i just lost my mum yeah, and dad recently this year yeah. what would i give to have like, no, like, like no, one day no. back with them you know what i mean no no i, I mean i haven't commented uh, certainly no. certainly not my politics um don't believe in privatization don't believe in a lot what the tories have done and you know, rip the I'm cutting you short there because politics is not really sport. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but can, can I say something? Of course you can, mate. Sure I, you I can. just happened to be in the pub earlier. Just happened to be in there, and you know, Maggie's supposed to be hated so much. I didn't mm. want to see one person in a pub, which yeah. is a proper pub. A proper pub, yeah. D that sl slagged no, off. No. They all said, you know, fair play. She's done what she's done. So, you know, I don't know where all this hatred comes from. It's uh, 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 keyboard says, warriors keyboard warriors yeah, on the internet so, so I've got nothing, I nothing better to do yet, not, well I'm gonna I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there because I'm gonna get wound up about it because it's been it's been yeah it's politics exactly it's, right? don't, don't be yeah. funny like as I say she was a Bruce fan as well absolutely <laughs> god bless her <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, okay, so it's good to be with my beautiful friends. Well, beautiful when I say beautiful, I'm talking Some about me because you're a good bunch of <laughs> scrotes in here. At all, at all. Well, we're Apart talking, from Rob, of course. While we're talking right. about people passing away, yeah, can on. we just mention about the passing of Tony de Grey? Yes, carry on. Uh, Tony, top, top man, uh, cure leukemia, done a lot of work for them, raised a lot of money. In fact, the first event that we put on and how I got into with cure leukemia was through Radio WM, my contacts there. And, uh, and listening to Tony, and uh, when you hear someone speaking as passionately as, as he did about that dreadful disease, you know, you, you only want to help him. Well, uh, yeah, and, and, that's and, it. and he was there on Langan's Day, and, and you know, I only met the guy a couple of times, but mm. I, if you meet someone for the first or second time and you feel as though you've known them all your life, that's a trait of, of a tremendous person. and he will be sadly missed by men I so but the work will go on in, in honour of yeah of course it absolutely will. of course and uh, of course well let's have, let's get on to it and uh, shall we and remind everybody what uh, yep. what's coming up in uh, the next couple Mate, of honestly we have got so many events coming up it's unbelievable talk quicker then we've, well I'm not going to talk about <laughs> it we've got an hour and a half I've be still got a few stillers to down as well but, uh, our next event is on the 20th of April yep. and that is Frank Worthington Day at the George at the George uh, we've got One Eye Baz 
uh, doing a book signing from. Just on that one eye Baz thing, it was great to see uh, one eye Baz in here two weeks ago, and, yeah. then, and then Radio West Midlands pick him up two weeks after we did. Yeah, well, you see, <laughs> you find a lot of people that are behind us. Even Absolutely, better, cutting it was, edge. It was a rubbish interview. The, of the Radio West Midlands, it was. I only listened to the first half because I was waiting outside the Blues Ground to walk down uh, to the um, the Dingles game, I might say. Yeah, but yeah. No, it was no, as good as us, mate. No, yeah, let's say Baz is there, and then the, the big man hopefully will be in the George around about one o'clock, half past one. Okay, and then we're going to do a Q and A with Frank after the game, probably about half five, six o'clock. Right, and um, we've got an auction, we've got a raffle, and we're raising money for the former players' association and Q and Luke. We do know I'll, I'll try my best to get there, but obviously I do work. Saturday I know it's like with work commitments and that, but yeah. say it'd be great because uh, Frank Worthington, one of the most charismatic, mercurial players ever to wear the blue shirt. Robbie's the most passionate. And, um, and and Frank is is also Excellent. one of our greats. Okay, well we, we usually judge our guests by uh, by uh, the, the stuff that Chris has put out. Now we've got we've got mixed nuts and raisins today, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, some salty yeah. peanuts, yeah. and we've got some look like ob knobs, but they ain't got chocolate on. So you're not you know yeah, you know what I mean. Tell you what I get when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll start off this week then. Uh, Cracking April Fools we did on, on Milan, and it was by accident, actually, right? Now, we actually thought, we genuinely thought that the Blues game was kicking off at midday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I said to my boys, because you know what they're like for getting up. I mean, they're like in their early 20s, and they. Mm. I can't stand it. If I'm going to leave at two minutes past 10, I'll leave at two minutes past 10, not three minutes past. Yeah? yeah. So I'll get down there early in the morning. Uh, I was uh, filling my car up with petrol. I mean, like, rings me. He says, Dad, he said the kickoff's not till three. And on April 4th, I was thinking he's winding, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. I said, I'm not biting this. I'm like, no, no, he says, no. So anyway, so I said, right, we'll put a kettle on, I'll be down. Right, so it gets there. One of my lads is still asleep. Now, this is like early in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning, yeah. and uh, I wanted to go, right? Dead early, so we could get there and obviously just meet you guys exactly. and have it. Um, uh, so he's still fast asleep. So we all get in the car, all right? We're all sat in the car outside, and he's still fast asleep in bed, ringing him, ringing him, ringing him. We won't answer the phone, won't answer the phone. Eventually, he answers the phone. Where are you? We're at Bassett's Bowl. Oh, what time is it? I said it's ten past ten. We're at Bassett's Bowl, been banging your door and have you? Oh no, no, you've left without me. So it took you eight minutes to get to Bassett's Bowl. No, it took. We were sat outside in the car. <laughs> Listen, <coughs> goodness me. So the poor lad thought we were halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> left him behind. But kick off work till three anyway. So hey. Uh, right, so on the bit of blues news this week, then Swindon Town rejected a number of bids from Birmingham City for on loan defender Paul Caddis, according to BBC W, uh, BBC Wiltshire. Scottish under-21 international has been on loan at St Andrews all season and uh, have been in good form too, with uh, himself being keen on a permanent uh, deal to stay at Stans. However, the doors are now open for Swindon to take him back. Uh, it's looking more more likely. £275,000 are looking for and we can't raise it. Does that mean we get Rooney back? Yeah, no, I don't think so, does it? I don't know. I don't did, know. Did he, has he gone there? Or so, is he, so what's Rooney really been doing? Really what's Rooney really been doing? Yeah. Well, he's been playing for Swindon. Oh, yeah. Well, Swindon are holding out for Swindon are holding out for two hundred and seventy-five thousand for Caddis. Yeah. Um, we've offered one hundred and twenty-five, and then one hundred and twenty-five in a few months' time, which is two fifty. Oppy, what do you reckon uh, about Caddis? I think that's a fair deal. I think it's a good price. He's it's it'd really be a good well price. Yeah, he has done well. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm not sure about that Redmond situation. Anyway, did we? I thought we swapped him alone. The Rooney one. A Rooney, Rooney yeah. I thought, I thought he, was, he was unknown to Swindon. And we Capo's not in, so we'll yeah, take that we'll as a positive. That was yeah. my, my well, thoughts yeah, that it was thought, uh, a loan deal. And, and I'm, sh I'm sure it was a loan because he couldn't go back and we couldn't get Rooney back when we had right. striking problems as well. Well, Caddis has another 12 months left on his contract at Swindon and uh, new manager Kevin McDonald down there now will return to the county ground is, is a probability, I would have thought. Well, oh, Caddis really. left because he didn't get on That's right. Absolute Decanio, 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 yeah. So. yeah. All right, OK, fun fact of the week. Founded in 1875 as Smallleaf Alliance, the club, Birmingham City, as we know it now, turned professional in 1885. Three years later, under the same name of Small Heath FC Limited, were the very first football club to become a limited company with a board of directors. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Well, why have you told me before? You, because you've never asked me before. Oh, <laughs> I know it, but I don't understand this. <laughs> I don't know what a limited company is no. compared to anything else. I'm just a we football were, club. Yeah. I mean, we have had a few firsts. Well, all right, you get on and Blues one, Millwall one. Hmm, not a bad result in form, Millwall. Uh, not a big crowd again. Personally, I thought it was an awful result. You know, um, well, they're in the semi-final uh, of the FA Cup. Right. Um, I, I, I don't know if you uh, you picked it up, and I believe there was the, the situation on the right wing where he, he wasn't a bad player actually. Their right winger, and he's, he's 
he's looked up and I think he's seen Big Curtis coming for the ball and he's thought, whoa, I ain't having any of this, I'm backing off a bit. And I thought Millwall, you know, with, with a cup semi-final the, the next week, I don't think they was ever going to go alpha lever in a 50-50s. I think there was going to be right. conservative about what they went in for. They did play a strong side. I thought uh, Kenny Jackett might have played his under-12s. But again, I still thought I still thought it was a game that uh, that we should have won. Really, really stick low. I'll be what you. I, I thought they had muscles a little yeah. bit. They were a big team. Maybe one of them was yeah. six foot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you look at the Blues. We're a small. A protect Ziggy chat about team. Yeah. We are a really small yeah. team. You're I not. You're not so tall yourself. I'll be how tall are you? Five foot. Twelve, five, <laughs> five, seven and a half. I five, seven, all the halves are always important. If you look today. on the um, on five, seven and, and, the, and the half. And the half. But um, yeah, I w- when I was playing, I was one of the smallest in the team. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's bigger it. players. No, it's bigger yeah. players. Yeah. But I think Blues are a really small. If you look at the Blues, we are a, You take it uh, Curtis Davis and Zidic, yeah. we are a very small team. Mm. And I think we just got a bit out muscle. Well, it was good to see Wes Thomas netting, though, wasn't it? Uh, he whacked one in, didn't he? Yeah. Ford is a tremendous striker. Well, he missed a fair few against Wolves, didn't he? Though, well, you know, for, forwards do, don't they? Yeah. You know, it, it, but what well, a, what a day that was! I mean, like, doesn't that just define Birmingham City's season? That Wolves game. It does you know, to be fair, yeah. Two halves again, hit the post three times, having to meet the Gabby at half time. Well, <laughs> probably, probably, probably for two men, it might have been a bit different. But no, it was that proverbial game of two halves, wasn't it? You know. Yep. Uh, it's, it was. Uh, Wolves had done or something. And they said that Wolves, Wolves are still deep in trouble. Yeah, and, they can't uh, and, defend. And it's hardly surprising. Missing a lot of key players now for the end of the season with um, St- uh, d- 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 e- Evax Blake breaking his leg, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, I thought that was. What do you reckon about that? Just one of your challenges that was up here, wasn't it? Wasn't I thought even it was a challenge. Wrong with it. <laughs> wrong at all. Well, even a challenge, was it? Uh, <laughs> he never got a book in. And talking about Wolves, one of my friends on, uh, on my social networks, Nazid's. Uh, Sent this in earlier. Two years ago, Blues were relegated at the expense of Wolves, who scored against Blackburn. Wolves could need something in the last game of the season to stay up. One of the teams down there, Blackburn. Blackburn's last game of the season, Blues. How sweet will revenge be? It was one of them games, wasn't it? I want it, I want it. (laughs) Blackburn were three up at half-time, weren't they? And then Wolves scored two goals second half. I think the last 25 minutes, no one put a challenge in, nobody played the ball forward, (coughs) and they they were all on the beach. But, Mm. you know, what goes around does come around, doesn't it? Yes, I hope so. You know. Well, other results this week meant that uh, B6 sadly looked like they might have saved their season now. Without a doubt. You know. Who's B6? Um, uh, Aston Village. Oh, it's that northern two. Um... (laughs) I've, I still think they're going to struggle, you know. They've, got, they've still got Man United, so. I think. I, I, Chelsea. Be, I'm telling you now, mate, I had a dream at the beginning of the season that Blues went up and Villa and Wolves both went down. Yeah. Well, we ain't going to manage ours now, are we? No. We had a chance a couple of weeks ago. It was there. It was there. Yeah. Well, we were just saying that being the back there, weren't there. we? Well, this time last week, if we'd have beat Wolves and... Yep, um, absolutely. Right. Millwall. The Millwall. The would, have been, Millwall. Uh, would have been the one place off. We'd be four points yeah. behind yeah. playoffs. Uh, and roaring. And we got Bristol City Seriously? next Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. Don't, 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 don't. It was there. It was there for the taking. Well, it, ju- it just disappoints you, doesn't it? Yeah, very it? much so. You know. And uh, on other things, anyway, Blues uh, under-21s losing 3-1 today. 3-0, uh, no, sorry, against Leicester. That's uh, oh. more news on that one. OK, Robert Hopkins, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Nice to be here. Tell us about the young Rob Hopkins, what uh, we don't know, the bits we don't know, what about your, your early life around these parts, growing up in schools and things? Uh, where do you, where shall I start? Um, At the school. beginning. Great place start to start. start. Went to, well, I was born in Smallleaf, Medina Road, yep. opposite Asda now, less than a mile to the Blues ground. Um, moved to Hall Green when I was about six or seven, Lakey Lane, Pitmas, and I went to Pitmas in school. Um, Obviously, four brothers, three sisters, all mad blues fans. My dad, me, me dad took us down the games. Or oh, you know, sometimes you get a rogue supporter, yes, like yeah, Black yeah. Sheep of the family. Yeah, but yeah. we, we, we still haven't out. got that name. <laughs> every, every, my brothers, sisters, they all. That's support, a familiar sound. They're all married to blues or yeah, boyfriends, girlfriends. So Pete Maston, yeah, was, left school at fourteen, or I think I was chucked out of school at fourteen, one or the other. But the maddest thing is. I had trials for Blues, Villa, Coventry, I had trials for everyone. Right. And I ended up signing for the Villa. I know, and... Which, you know... How does that feel like? Where do, where do we go from there? Well, the biggest, the biggest question I've got with that one is, is, is you're blue nose through and through. At the time I was, and, I went to every Blues game. And the game. Villa signed you up. Is, is that your first professional contract? Well, it was an apprentice. An apprentice. An apprentice, right. yeah. And you 
are looking at me straight in the eye now. You had to sit in that changing room and put that shirt on. Yeah, but tell them what you had underneath it, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> now, before, before that, though, before that, I, was, I wasn't expelled, but I was chucked out of school. Right. The, the, I, le I had to leave early. Asked to leave. For, yeah. yeah. Nice time. I wasn't expelled, but, yeah. um, so, you know, blues and that, because a lot of teams didn't want to know me because I wasn't the, the best behaved person in the world. Right. So Villa said, come to us, we'll, we'll have you. And yeah. to be honest, that was brilliant. They used to give you tracksuits, looked after you, give you expenses, you know. And um, I asked my dad for advice. He said, sod off, son. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be quality, stupid. <laughs> quality advice from a quality pop, and that's what I say. That. But in the end, it, it made sense just to, you know, I was playing football. And then, as you say, as you, I, I played for Villa, went in the change room. I always had something blue and white on me. Did always. all the other team members know that? Yep. Yep. When um, you're 14, they don't care. Right. Because okay. you're a kid. You've got, yeah, I yeah. have my blues bag, or, you know, scarves, or whatever. And how many times did you actually play for the Villa? I played three times. Three well, times. One full appearance and two substitutes. Okay. Now, that, that, what, what about that day when, when you made your full appearance and, you, and you're having to pull that okay, shirt on? Okay, okay. Uh, well, I, I was just thinking about this this afternoon at home. I was thinking, I, I actually couldn't put a Villa shirt on. I couldn't do it. Well, I was playing for the reserves for years. <laughs> You've you got to remember the 14 I was playing. Yeah. But I always had something blues. I, was, I met you and my dad said, make, make sure you always wear something blue. <laughs> right, so it sounds like a quality bloke. But, and I was playing for Villa Reserves, who used to kick off at two o'clock. Right. So we played a game, so I always got to the second half of the Blues anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd finish early, so I'd get changed quick, and what's the second half of the Blues? But anyway, I was only, um, my first debut was 17. Um, it was before Villa won the European Cup, in 1978. Uh -huh. I nearly said we then. They play Norwich. I nearly <laughs> said we then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Played Norwich and they, the, Ron Saunders said, um, Ron Saunders man, he said, you sub tonight. There was only one sub, I think, uh, in them days. Probably was, yeah. I, I think, I think there was one sub in them days, yeah. So, um, you were there then as well, Gav. <laughs> I spoke to my dad, I spoke to some people. And so I couldn't, <laughs> uh, I couldn't take a blues bag. I couldn't, because I'm in the foot, you know. Right, you, yeah. So what I did, I got there and I put got changed and I had this little world ball black you know the blue mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. but a really small one so I put put the shirt on so I put this badge underneath um, so I came on um, we played Norwich I came on a substitute last minute this is this, in the world book of records one touch scored really yeah scored for the last so right how did that feel did you celebrate um, it well, what it was it was a last minute so it didn't feel like everybody it was, was going anyway. It, it was one nil. <laughs> Villa were winning one nil. Yeah. So I, was, I scored this goal, and it was two 0 and then it was merely touch, and then the full time whistle went. Right. So what I did, I went like that, kiss. It looked like the shirt, <laughs> but I've kissed my blues badge, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> so in those days, it wasn't Twitter and none of that. So yeah, yeah. Villa fans, probably there was a rumour actually. I was a blues <laughs> fan. Yeah, but all Villa fans thought he must be a Villa fan. He's kissed his shirt. But I've got this blues badge, haven't I? Oh, no, I've kissed it. Right. So it got round. He's, you know, it's, the pressure took off me a bit because everybody's saying, he must be a Villa fan, he's yeah. kissed his shirt. Mm -hmm. But I was kissing my badge. <laughs> Little did I know. And like that's, that made it yeah. really good, you know, and that made it acceptable. <laughs> I've just kissed my blues badge, scored and whatever. So, you know. And right. then your other games, Rob, you... Um, well, I was subbed the week after against Stoke. And then Notts County. Well, that, well that, that was a bit, that was a while after Notts County. So I was subbed a week after yeah. against Stoke and Villa lost 2-0, which was a shame, you know. <laughs> I, came <laughs> the last, I came on the last 10 minutes. <laughs> I can't remember, I played against Notts County, I can't remember how long afterwards it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a while afterwards, so yeah. it was after Ron Saunders, Tony Barton took charge. Oh, okay. I think, I think it was a year after they won the league and um, played this Notts County game. And I, I, I'm actually starting my first yeah. game, so you know I've got I've played the game, got my blues badge on as usual. You know, um, Villa were losing four 0 so like up the, he was up in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what happened? You've been to Nuss County in the old days. There's uh, the way fans used to go in the corner. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, yeah. So we'll Villa four 0 down, so I'm taking the corner. It's the first corner we had, I think, all, all the game. So. Went over to set the corner, but there must have been a tussle or something before, and my blues badge had come out. Right. It had kind of, you know, 
exposed they, itself yeah, somewhere. They had the V-shirt, and I used to be pretty into hide <laughs> it, but it would come out like, so you could see it easy, so I went over to this corner, and like, I had some bill of fashion. He's got a blues badge on, <laughs> and like, and everybody's, and there was nearly a riot that, that, that was, was yeah. trying to get at me. That was the end of your career. Off at me. That was the end of your career. Was there, like, was well, it? The corner it was the last minutes. I don't know what happened to the corner, but like we was off. Yeah. And like after there was there was punch ups in the corner. All the guys trying to get onto the pitch and all this, but um, the old badge. But needless to say, that was that was my one and only full game for the right. <laughs> but um, it was. The the badge went So you got yourself into the record books and then managed to lose four 0 the next time round. It was well, the one. I can't remember that. that. I can't that's remember what I call that. Uh, that's what I call it. That's career. in the record books. That goal. Brilliant. Yeah, really. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's against Norwich. Kevin Keelan <clears throat> was in goal. Yeah. He was a decent. He's one to, I was only on the pi pitch thirty seconds. Scored and that was it. Lana. So he can't be beat, really. You know. So. But it was good because I kissed the badge. All yeah. He can't be a blues man. He's kissing the badge. <laughs> well, they, they found out a few years after that <laughs> what he was kissing was his Birmingham yeah. City badge. Lana. So in the deal, in the deal that saw you come to blues, then Curbs went the opposite way. Yeah, man. I like and Kerbs, yeah. Uh, good friends. Curbs is all right. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think blues got the best deal. Hmm. I, think definitely did. <laughs> I like to think so. Curbs is a good player, wasn't he? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many games he played for Villa or whatever, but he was, a, he was a good player. He did well for the Blues, didn't he? Yeah. Mm. To be honest. Because it's, it's 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 not that often that you you, you see the, the the divide, happen, well, you know the, the players crossing the divide. Was, it? was the last one. There, was it? There was a lot of the times when, when Rob was, Saunders yeah, moved over. Yeah. There we, was a lot. Of we've had a number from yeah. from yeah. Villa. Yeah. 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 It was it was the Ron Saunders thing. He he took over. Oh, Tony Reese come as well, didn't he? Had, he had uh, no Dave right. Des Bremner went over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dave Geddes. Yeah. Um, there was there was quite a few. Tony Morley. Yeah. But they they didn't care about it. They was. They were Villa people. Yeah. So, uh, as a kid, then uh, being tanked to Blues, where would you stand or sit? Um, well, my first game was 1966, and my dad in the cop, as usual. And you know, people say it's not true that they carried you down, but oh, they did. I was actually <laughs> carried <laughs> in the top corner in the top. I was actually carried all the way down. Yeah. And it's it's a thing that you never forget. You mm, know, it's pretty scary. It was yeah. a night game, and you see all the smoke coming, all the flat caps in their yeah. nose, and. But in them days, I sat. You remember, you could sit by the side. Yes. There was a bit of gravel. Yeah. yeah. There was the pitch, the grass. Yes. yes. And then there was about that so much gravel. Where about this? Where about this? Where the team men used the to walk around. Side, in the cup side. Yeah. Yeah. And you get the team men selling yeah. programs and all that. Yeah, yeah. But With the white coat on. You used yeah. to be able to sit on that gravel. That's that's where I used to sit when we did. Right. Used to do that. Yes, yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, great it was. Okay, so um, you then get signed up for Blues. Um, now you've got a real shirt on, a proper shirt. One that you'd want to wear. Mm. Sitting in the dressing room, what was your first game? Not to count, not to count again. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, not to count was that home, home or away? At home. At but home. I, I couldn't, but you, it, it wouldn't sink in there I'd side for blues, you know. Right. I, I, was people, I was phoning people. I was, you, you, you see, it was like a dream. Yeah, all your it life. Was amazing. You've been it there was, looking up to uh, yeah, your court amazing. heroes and this, that, and the other. All of a sudden, you are one. And you're reading that on the back of the one. evening mail. Yeah. It was, it was unbelievable. That must be a, a scary thing for the first time. I was a nervous wreck. Yeah. I've never been. That was the most scariest day walking out of the blue. I got 120 tickets, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not to there, were, there was only 150 there. <laughs> Watch me score within a minute. <laughs> but um, no, it was a good crowd. But it was not scary. I always remember it, and I always remember my first touch. This is it was a head it bounced up, headed it, and there was a big roar. And the Blues fans were on my side straight away. Right away Unbelievable. Cause, absolutely. Because I knew the passion. I like to it. think I'm a one-off. Mm. You know, because I used to go to every single game, and this header, and there was a massive roar, and straight from then I felt. You know, I felt great. And Blakey was there anyway after, because, right. you know. Felt at home. So, I mean, to be fair, I mean, I remember Happy Wedding when he come, as say, Curbs, decent player. Yeah. And uh, this young boy, they come with a bit of a reputation. And, uh, and we knew that he was a Blues fan. And, and as I say, it was like, it wasn't long until we took Happy to our hearts, because we knew that he was one of us. And, uh, you know, if, if you could, I mean... If you could play any game that's ever been played in the history of football, what game would you play? I'd play that game again, my first Blues game. Yeah. It's amazing. You, you could never put that into words. 
As that a, was as some a, feeling, you know. Yeah. Uh, that, that time they used to come out at the halfway line, hadn't they? Oh, yeah, you have to, yeah, you used to have to walk past yeah. a day club and everybody's having a drink and yeah. all my mates are in going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and the yeah, yeah. Yeah. passing the beer over. <laughs> oh, oh. In that day club, all up is like, I tell you what, they prop the bar up every weekend. <laughs> oh, I'd have that game, you know, I'll never forget that first that first touch. Then, I'll yeah, never no, forget that. Walking out that tunnel and, and nobody will ever take that off. Nobody will ever take that off. Hearing that noise. But again, that, you know, out of all the players that's ever played for Birmingham, Oppy has got to be the most passionate footballer that, that we've ever had well, one I was of a, us that's wore our shirts you, you know people say they support so I mean I yeah. was at um, Hillsbury in 1972 2 Leeds yeah 3-0 we lost Leeds yeah 72 we played in the red and white didn't yeah. I was there I was there at Hillsborough. Mm. I was I was there at Main Road first time I ever seen my dad cry that was really yeah so you know I'm proper everybody proper. knows I'm proper I'm, I'm not you know Mickey Mouse plastic what's the inside your shirt today not today, no. <laughs> I got, I got a tattoo, blue tattoo. Have you ever seen it? Have you not? It's Birmingham, England, I've got. All oh, right. So that's on the chest. He's, he's not going to get his nips out. He's not going to get his nips out in the studio. He's so, not going to do it. He's so. shy. <laughs> it's good radio, this, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Have a look at his tattoo. Well, well, we normally, we normally got, got a camera the, uh, on the go, but not today. Where's the camera gone? Has it gone down? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got to do the tape. Probably. Oh well, there you go. Yeah. Needless to say, you played with some characters during that time. Oh, absolutely brilliant. The, the people. You, as I say, I'm, I'm proper blues, but in, when Ron Saunders done the early '80s team, yeah, they was turned into blues fans. They yeah. loved the they loved the club, the supporters, and and the team, the camaraderie. You know, Ron Saunders used to say, "I want a team who I can be in the trenches with." Yeah, you know, in Iraq or whatever, and he and he got one. Mm. We wasn't the best playing team in the mm -hmm. world, but nobody had out muscle us. We was we was brilliant, and after a game. All eleven would be in the pub, not one or two. All eleven, and nobody was allowed to go home until next day. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, seriously, it was, a, it was proper. I can vouch for that because I used to work at Faces at the time. Yeah, and I yes. often, you know, I used to work in the day club and serve up to his first oh, right, point. Right, right. And then at the end of the night, oh, there's up over the bar, and I'm putting the shutters up, and, and all the players used to be up there. There were a there were a team on the pitch, and there were a team off the pitch, and, and I think that's what be, Ron Saunders uh, gave and, you, didn't uh, And I don't care what you say. That was the I wouldn't say the hardest. Probably oh, right. the yeah, it's probably wrong, but it's the hardest squad of players you'll ever get. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll make it. Make yeah, oh, went to Wimbledon. I mean, how hard was me? He, he called them pussycats yeah. to, compared to the Blues. So I mean, in that team, we'd got Blakey. Tony we got Coton, our Gale, our Gale, yourself. I Pat mean, Van den Oh, I mean, he was a psycho, wasn't he, Pat? <laughs> Pat Van den Oel. Was his Pat name? Psycho. Yeah, psycho, Pat. All right, we've got some questions coming then. Uh, first one, please, GA. Yeah. Well, we <coughs> we've got a grand total of one at the moment, but um, Blue Hubber says, "Who does Hoppy class as his the best player he's played against, alongside and against?" It's always difficult, man. You, know, you could say, you know, players. But I like to say best forward or best defender right. or best. But as you say, Mick Arford, yeah. easily Mick. He was a great player, but he was the hardest. He was the hardest player as well. And the best defender, Mark Dennis, easily. Mark was brilliant. And the, the goalkeeper was difficult because mm. I played with Tony Coat and Dave Seaman. Right. But Dave Seaman let in the goal against Altrincham. Yes. Yeah, we were going to. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to that one in a minute. After 1986. About one o'clock in the morning, I said you'll never make it, you <laughs> Dave, because your fault. <laughs> so, oh, I mean that that was a. How old would he have been then? He was he not long come from Peterborough, hadn't he? Is it Peterborough? Yeah. Or was it Leeds? No, I thought he'd come from Peterborough. Did he go Leeds, Peterborough, Brummagem? Mm, yeah, I can't remember. Going. Yeah, so yeah. he had something to do with Leeds. I'm a, I'm, I'm a researcher, I can't do things by memory. I think, I think <laughs> Tony Kirk and Dave Seaman, I'm picking Tony Kirk because he didn't embarrass me. Oh, That's exactly. <laughs> Mind you, I mean, Tony Coton, what a goalkeeper he was. I'd, I'd, oh, I'd say Coton, if I was to name my all-time blues, I would take Coton. We've had some cracking over the years, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Whelans was a great Jeff goalkeeper. Jeff Jim Blythe right? was there when I yeah. started. Jim Blythe, yeah, was mm. a good keeper, yeah. Well, Jeff was in goal for Altrincham that night. Well, we'll, we'll, come, to that, uh, we'll yeah, come to that yeah, goal. Yeah. Come to that goal now, then, that Altrincham goal. That must oh, have just well, I taken him to pieces. You scored the ball for us, yeah. Yeah, but it was just one of those things that... I kind of took it, and I just kind of pat in those days. You could pass it back, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, Dave said me. He just, I think it was he, he just slipped in there. You know, bloody it is. He was put on the right boots. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the most embarrassing night of my life. I, I, I did go to some pub, and didn't come yeah. out for because it was actually on the front page of the Evening Mail. Oh, it was not the a back. Nightmare. It was on the front page, so. 
and but, and but it, it, that is why I love Blues fans. Yeah. I played the next game. Anybody else would be dead Shocked. scared. Or yeah. you just but yeah. they they were brilliant to me. Give me a round of applause and everything. That was brilliant. Just so you know, and they should have slaughtered Dave Seaman a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, that, what was he? It was a third round. It was a replay warning because it was it was a night game. It wasn't a replay. We hadn't played them before. Didn't was it a Saturday game? Was, was it was it late? No, it was a Saturday? night game, but it wasn't a replay. And he got cancelled. Then definitely the first hadn't. One, yeah. We hadn't played at Ultra and definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but the the strangest thing is, um, a couple of years ago, I, I had a letter off Altrincham Supporters Club, yeah. inviting me to their twenty fifth anniversary of beating them. Of the goal. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. They did you get it? No, I did not. No. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think they did have, have one. I think they was taking a mic. Oh right, yeah. right. I don't think they actually had a do. But yeah. they sent me this invitation, which was fair play. It was quite funny. So well, that, I mean, that was a mad. I mean, there was what was it about six thousand as well then that night, wasn't there? Mm. The gate was really low, <laughs> and uh, to be honest, all the Altrincham players they all come in the D club. I don't remember you lot coming in the D club that night, but I remember Jeff Whelan's and the rest of them. And, and to be fair, I had to serve them. You know, it was uh, prob probably. I would say probably that was Birmingham's darkest hour. One of them. Well, it, you know, to One get beat to Altrincham well, in a cup game. Equivalent, equivalent to a Premier, Premier yeah. League team, we were yeah. first division. But even so, like in them days, as Rob says, you know, we were a, you know, a, a first division team. It happens it was almost every year, though, doesn't it? You know, you get one. Like yeah, that. but not particularly like that. The deaf now were sounding so at the Didn't in them days. Used to beat us a couple of years later. They, they yeah. did, but I think we that were in a better that. position. To be fair, that was that was one of my. Well, that was nineteen nineteen ninety three. I mean, Sullivan and Gold had just bought the Blues, <coughs> and uh, you know we were we were on we were on the up. Whereas the Altrincham game, we were definitely on a slide down. I mean, we got relegated that season, Rob, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, last I game don't of think season, we, we won another game. I thought. No, I don't think we did. It just destroyed us. Oh, it was it, it was awful. Then were deep, deep, dark days Tell me about for Birmingham City. I remember turning up to them. Oh, yeah. Doing no. the safari in the car park, by, um, by the uh, in, in between the um, GM and, and, the, and the cop. There used to be some parking oh, up there. That, that you, you'd, you'd be lucky to get in. Mm. The potholes was up there. Oh. <laughs> dark, dark days. We ain't there anymore, though. No, but you know, I mean, he was. Uh, we ain't far off, but we're there. <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd, I mean, things are, things are bad and things are tight and all the rest of it now. But so I think in them days it was um, it was awful. Them were the days of uh, Ken Weldon. I think it took over the club at that time. Well, look at the look at the state of the stadium then as well. Though. Oh God, it was desperate. It was yeah. desolate. You know, it was awful. You know, with all the, bit, the bits and pieces and all the you know the bad things and that that Sullivan and Gold they did do an awful lot of good for Birmingham mm. City. You yeah, know, through yeah, the don't. football foundation they built three parts of the football ground and they did resurrect it. Okay, it's, it's not you know. At the minute, going as we'd like to with the with the Chinese, but you know, who oh. knows what's around the corner? At I'll Birmingham come to them in a minute. I'll come to them. I might have don't a little bit of snippet. Oh, don't get me snip started. Don't don't rubbish. Might have a snippet. I don't believe anything. Might have a snippet oh, for you again. Go just, away. just watch his space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, managers changed. John Bond came in. Was it John Bond? Mm. Um, uh, wasn't that when I left and come back? Just as you were, just as you were leaving, I believe, wasn't it? Oh yeah, he sold me, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's John Bond turned yeah. up. He, yeah. he turned up in a Jaguar and a big cigar. I didn't know. I remember that now. Yeah. Basildon. Yeah, he just wasn't right for the Blues, was Mind he? You, he signed you for Sh for Shrewsbury as well Shrewsbury, a few years yeah, later, didn't he? Yeah. One hundred and thirty thousand he sold you for, didn't he? One hundred and sixty-five. One sixty-five to um. Where did I go? You went Man City. Man City. Man City, and then you went, yeah, to, I went to, uh, Man City, yeah. to West Brom, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. Man City, yeah. Not long after and that. Man City were broke at the time. They they were they were struggling financially, mm -hmm. big star, yeah. So then you come back to Blues in 89? 88. 88. Well, I went 89. to Man City, I went to West Brom after that, didn't I? You scored, because there, there was an infamous incident, one that we've we've talked about, and, you know, with Birmingham City supporters going, up he come and scored a goal against the Blues. Oh, for the Yeah, remember oh. when you celebrated. But oh, yeah. Tell us the story of that, because it, it ain't as simple as that, is it, mate? Well, it never is, is it? No, well, it never is. We played, we played, for, I don't know why, it was a Sunday morning, and um, Roger, An I remember Roger Hansbury was in goal for the Blues. Yeah. But um, West Brom won, I think it was 4 nil, and I, I actually scored two. Yeah. And I didn't celebrate the first one, but the second one, I celebrated because nobody knows. This yeah. all during the game, I was taking corners for West Brom yeah. in this corner, and there was this 
bloke, he's about 18, and he kept on spitting at me and mm. throwing things at me and bottles and <clears throat> well, I don't know what I, I don't know what I've done to him. Yeah. And he he actually spat right on me. Remember was, the fencing was still there? Yeah. And he spat right on my face like, and actually just as he's done it, I actually scored this goal. So I, d I celebrated, but I celebrated to him. Yeah. To this one bloke. So afterwards he got round our Hoppy can't be that much of a blues fan, he celebrated. Yeah. But it wasn't celebrating the goal, it was this yeah. bloke who I'd love to have gone over the fence. <laughs> and smashed. And sm give him a smack. But he got round afterwards, oh, he can't be that much of a blues fan, he's celebrating. And that. Yeah. But it was nothing to do with, you know, blues, it was just this one bloke. Yeah. Which I'd love to see him again, but, you know. Mm. But as you say, that's... He probably wouldn't know that's got it. round. That, that's got round, you know, they were celebrating. But I didn't, I'm just... This one bloke, I was trying to get hold of him. So, so on, on, your, on your second return to Blues, then uh, we made the uh, famous journey down to Wembley, and of course, uh, Mr. Lou McCauley didn't play, did he? At, at, at the time, the club was in the right state as well, to be honest. You know, it's just, you know, it's just, um, well, the second time, Gary Pendry signed me back. Right. Um, him and Bomber Brown. He signed me deadline day from the Albion. Um, so I went back, I thought, I'll go back to the Blues. I'm the only person that went back for less money. Mm -hmm. A lot less money be because it was the Blues. I had two years on my contract at the Albion. I thought, that's, you know, I'll, I'll go back where I'm supposed to be. But the saying's right, never go back. Mm. Yeah. It, it was in the club. The first day I went back, we was training on the car park. <laughs> and we had to put coats down as goals. And I'm oh. thinking, what? I swear to God. And then it was one o'clock. And the factories had the dinner, and they come over and joined in the father's side. <laughs> All the factory lads. I mean, it was, it was a, we had one ball. It was complete chat. I thought, what's going on? Uh, and I think the first game, I think that was three. I think there was six phases and there yeah. were seven phases. Yeah, it would have been about that in them days. And I thought, what have I come back? No. What's happened to my club? Yes. Yeah. But um, it, it, it got better gradually. As I say, um, we got, did we get ready to go? Gary Pendry left and Bomber. Bomber Brown was his number two, I remember that, and um, I think Lou took over after that. But Dave, was Dave McCoy, wasn't he? Dave McCoy would have been in the well. mix there somewhere. Oh, somewhere. He, was he before Lou, or after? <laughs> he was, um, <laughs> blimey, yeah, he was definitely before. It was Pendry, McCoy, and then, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. Lord Louis and Teddy Cooper and Barry but Dave Brown McCoy, you'd think, so you'd think he'd be, as a player, you'd think yeah. he'd be... A great manager. Well, he did win the championship, didn't he, for Derby? Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, he, that was really was, Brian Clough's team. He was just he was so over. boring. He was, you know, he put you to sleep. He what was, were your managers yeah, like? No. He, he was just there and, you know, he had no intensity about him. Well, did he join in the training? Was he no, a, 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 no, no, not at all. Uh, Never got shorts on his life. Blimey. I think somebody said, because he, he used to, well, I don't know if he used to like it, but he'd been in Saudi Arabia for years as well. Oh, OK. Know? And he just used to sit there watching, and never ever join in, never ever. And like you got team talks, he boys to death. He was, he was absolutely. You'd think Dave McKay, his reputation, wouldn't you? Absolutely, yeah, absolute but legend he, of the game. He was absolutely boring. Oh right. So, so who, who was the most charismatic manager that that you? Well, I had Ron under. Saunders, I love Ron Saunders. Yeah. You know, he had a reputation hard as that. He was. Yeah. But. He'd, he'd get you in the dressing room and he'd tell you a joke. He's, he was so yeah. different. But as soon as the press were there, or something, he'd be, you know, we used to do the running with the habits like an army yeah. on our backs, and you know, he was, he was a sergeant major. But as soon as you got in, mm. in the chain room, he was good as gold. He's funny. He's funny as anything. But and he saw he signed me three times, so he knows a good player. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of modesty. He knows he's a good player. player. And he was built like a brick outhouse. And oh, he was, he was a fit guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so going back to the 91 Cup final then. Um, any reasons why he didn't get played? Oh, this is a story. When Lou McCarry was in charge, then, wasn't he? Yeah. So we get to our first Cup final for 40 years. Or yeah. Yeah, yes, that's 56. Where do we stay? Reading University. To mm -hmm. save money, right. Reading University, we stayed. No tellies. We we went in his room. No tellies. Yeah. There was nothing. There was a, it was just a single. It was a um, university because I was on holiday, and, and there was one bed there. And nothing. First final for years. Forty thousand blues. Yeah. And we're at Reading University. So what we did the um, the day before the game, he said, "Well, this this is eight of the players that are going to play. This is the team." 
he said there's two places left he said so whoever runs around this pitch three times the quickest you're joking he's playing he's that's how he picked the other two players yeah so Dean Peel won <laughs> <laughs> and somebody and I come last thing so well he'd, he'd have had what a pick a team anyway wouldn't he Dean Peer. that's where it's a go we're trying what a way to morning. pick a team <laughs> and he, he was it's a good idea he said yeah, the quickest team level. Level. that is a joke, joke. Oh. But I didn't like Lou McCoy one little answer. So really? What, what was he like? What didn't you like about Lou? It was just run, 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 run. Really? And he's on the radio now and he talks all this about football yeah, yeah. tactics and that. And when he was at Blues, he just make you run up and down non stop. That was it. Did you never see a ball rubbing your second time he went not to Not with Lou McCoy, not really. And I was getting on a bit then as well. Yeah. You know, so, was, you know, the old fitness was starting to go and too much of the old pop. It was catching up on me. Who were the characters in, in that dressing room there in the 91 group? Because, I mean, in the 80s, there were a team of characters, a team of captains. In yeah. the 90s, what were the guys? They were quite a young team as well, weren't yeah. they? Gailey was there, weren't they? Yeah, big Gailey scored yeah. the goals. You had Vince, Vince Overson. Yeah. So what, was, what, what, what did he have for breakfast that day? <laughs> Who? John Gale to score them two goals. Oh, I tell you, John, oh, yeah. he was a colossus, weren't he? Great goal. Oh, that overhead kick is yeah. one of the best I bet he hasn't scored I've ever seen. Oh, Simon Sturridge was sub, wasn't he? He went on Simon Sturridge. Now Sturridge started, didn't he? he started. Uh, Sturridge and, uh, and Gailey he played up yeah. front because he played the ball. Did, I mean, we won 3 2, didn't Gailey? Didn't he, he, he flicked a ball through and Simon scored yes. the first goal? Uh, um, is my memory right there? No, he flicked it He flicked it through. Or was it the other way? Stop, I think, didn't he? Oh, she, only I'm six, sure. I mean, it's like. Almost a <laughs> generation ago, and it, yeah. it's such a long time ago. And without looking, the only, the only thing, one of the things that still sticks in Studge mind, was from, definitely from that play. Day, uh, just after the final whistle was when you walked on the pitch, and everybody, everybody that was in there was singing the I I Oppy song, absolutely cracking. Yeah, and I, 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 I do remember that. Well, one. I thought I, it might have put me on for ten seconds, just to just to yeah, because, well, so just to finish your career off with almost. Well, the the thing I mean. is, we we did the um, you know the open bus top thing. Oh, tell us about yes. that, right? On the Monday. Yeah, but you was late, weren't you? Oh, I've been out. <laughs> Why don't you answer <laughs> all the questions, Gab? <laughs> I've been out. <laughs> you, you, tell I'd, us that. I've been out all night, had not I? So no. I'm in, the, I'm in the pub, you know, where McDonald's is. The water and all, weren't you? The water and all. Yeah. all. This is a... I'm in, I'm in there from the night before, 10 o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden I'm looking at them and then the coaches are going past. I said, I'm supposed to be on there. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was a team coach who had gone from the ground. So I've legged it outside, running up the road. I said to a couple, I'm supposed to be on there. He says, of course you are, son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, if it wasn't for Simon Sturridge and somebody else saying, he's, he's, he's supposed to be here, they wouldn't have let me on. So I had to leg it to actually get on the, the team bus. <laughs> Mind you, it's fair to say, if you'd have run as quick to get that team bus as you uh, did round Reading, you might have got to start it when we up There you go. Cracker. Oh, Cracker. So you and, uh, you and Lou wouldn't, uh, wouldn't exchange Christmas gifts then? <laughs> It just surprised me. I was, it was just, you know, it's all physical running. There was mm, yeah. nothing tactical whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you listen to him on the radio now. He's mm. brilliant. Tactical, you know, what Man United have done on that. Yeah. I wish he'd have done that when, you know, he was with us. You know, try to help us tactical wise instead of just trying to kill us. Mm. Running marathons. How much of a difference as a player does that make up? You know, when you when you're in there, the team talks. But well, you want to feel wanted. Yeah. You know, players like kids, and they. Yeah. If, if, if managers just sit there, go and run up there. You know? Yeah. You want to say you want managers. Well, I think Redknapp's probably brilliant. I think looking at. Him. Yeah. You know, you're brilliant. You want to John mm. Bond used to, to be honest. You're brilliant. You're great. And that's what players want to hear. You know, yeah. a bit of confidence and not go and run round the pitch twenty five times. Yeah. Well, that's not, that's why my football career never took off. You, you couldn't kick a ball in anger, that's why you I don't think it could happen now, the game's changed so much, you, yeah. you don't run I don't understand pitches, quite why uh, why the whole studio broke out into laughter then. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, you, you don't run around pitches anymore, uphills, it's all ball work, and it's, it's completely changed, the game's completely changed. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it is a game of football, isn't it, and you, you need to introduce the ball into training, I mean, if all you can do is run uphill and down dale, you know, you, you might as well go and have an athletic side. Saying so, so that about the... Um, the coach thing as well after we won um, Wembley 91 yeah um, the next day was it next day we, we had the, um, had the open open top yeah, yeah. Day. And, and one of the Kumars gave me a lift home said uh, what do you reckon about next season what we're going to do and it was brilliant yeah talking about what we're going to do so the Tuesday morning I got a I got a telegram saying you're sacked <laughs> 
Why again? We don't want you no more. So he, he picked 24 hours before he said, what yeah. you written next time? Yeah, he picked your brains about all, it, yeah. It was telegrams in them days. Oh, yeah, right. they give you a yeah. you know, and, he's, and he sold you this. Well, I've still got the telegram saying you are no longer wanted at the club or something. All right, one question before we go for half time. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. Uh, question. Okay, we go. Uh, do you have any? Do you have any regrets about your football career? career? Absolutely loads. Yeah. <laughs> loads. Absolutely loads. How long we got? What's your biggest one up? <laughs> biggest one. Uh, I, I hate to say I shouldn't have gone back to the Blues. Yeah. No matter how much I love that club, the second time the Blues was just it wasn't you know it was a. It was a disaster, the old place, and, yeah. and my head done it. I'd done it for less money. Yeah. I was at the Albion. I'd done it for a lot less money, and you think it's the same all the time. Yeah. So, and I was upset, and you know, but uh, that was probably it. To go it was about those times. That's I took terrible. my ex missus to her first game, and uh, went down for a pie at half time. They served on a piece of ripped up cardboard box. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, was, was, and you were playing. I couldn't believe it. I, just, I was just so shot. I was in shock for ages. You were played all over the place as well. They even played you right back. Didn't I played they? right back. I, pl I played every position <clears throat> one season, barring goal. Yeah. Right. Okay. We'll uh, we'll take a quick uh, one minute break, two minute break, and then we'll have uh, Capo on straight afterwards. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Where do I come from? Where do I come from? Where do I come from? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Where does my name come from? Where does my name come from? Where does my name come from? Ask family trees for you. Ask family trees for you. Ask family trees. Looking for somebody to trace your family tree? Come to Family Trees for a free consultation. With over 30 years experience, we can research one individual, one surname, a whole family tree. Your finished report is confidential and will include detailed results, including confirmed family links and photos. So, for a free consultation, visit our website www.com familytreesforyou.co.uk Email us at info at familytreesforyou.co.uk or just follow the links on the Sports Radio homepage. Who am I? Who am I? Welcome back for the second half, and I'm uh, going to bring Capo in straight away. He's uh, our youngest member. How old are you, mate? Um, I'm 12. 12. Blue through and through? Yeah. Yeah, good lad. Definitely. And uh, always have been? Uh, yeah. First game? Bolton at home. Bolton at home. Uh, there you go. I think it was 2007. Excellent. All right, Capo's going to give us a, uh, a little bit of a read upon supporters, football supporters uh, in general. Here you go. Um, supporters of a club are not just an individual people or families. They are a community, and a community that brings the stadium to life every other Saturday. But what is happening to our community as the money builds up and the fame uh, up the famous sport as the young generation such as myself have a rough idea on how much things cost. 
So how can we get the tickets to go down a price? Well, you tell me, because I for one think that this community which is beginning to be broken down into little pieces deserves their voices to be heard. So let's stand up and remember that we are all one. Different clubs, different beliefs, same passion. Because football without the fans is nothing. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. right. Well, I think you're right. I think that's a, that's a good little that's, talking that's point. That's definitely got a future, don't you reckon, Gab? Yeah, of course he is. You know, I mean, he's a 12-year-old little boy. I mean, blimey, I wouldn't say boot to a goose when I was 12 and, and stuff and that. And I think to, I to come that, into to a studio and, and read something out, you know, it takes a bit of brass nerves to do that and absolutely, absolutely totally respect for your son but I think you're right I mean how, how do you change it how do you give uh, the game back to the supporter it's very difficult because the, well, the game the has gone so far the other way one of the things that you was going to talk about a little bit later and I've just mentioned the two words season tickets no absolutely and, you know, I mean, you know, just a general price. Get in. Look at look at the price of German football. Well, let's to, you know, let's let's have the debate now on, on the back of what Go um, it, what Capo's, You know, in in Rob's day, you know, the players were one of us. Hmm. We could relate to them. You know, in the eighties, they were always seen in the same pubs as us. They'd live in the same roads as us. They they were one of us. Now that game that we all love is is so far away from the working class fan. And its roots, it's beyond belief. I mean, you've got the game tonight, Man City, Man United. You know, two hundred thousand pound a week for a football player. Some of them players are on Sky Sports. It's mate. absolutely ridiculous. Sky Sports, mate. Well, it's just crazy. Sky Sports. You and know, I'm afraid to say, if you look at what B6, the supporters did in the whole ten that Sky Storms, the footballing world. I think that just sums up. What's happened to the football and what Sky, did they do? Um, they did like a banner thing. Okay. Just to um show that football is going down a bit now but as we look at the ladies football that's just kicking off isn't it it is i don't think it'll ever be as big as the guys football i don't think uh Kappa, not for, no. for any 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 uh shot but um it, it, will, it will take off but it will take off in a yeah, it was, kind it, of way you know it's it's two different games <laughs> so up you know we, we were talking about that earlier because um, we had no ladies football back in your day up was it no, no, no chance of that. No. What do no. you think to women's football as a? It's coming on, isn't yeah. it? It's coming on. I mean, I think it'll take time, like anything, you know. But it is coming on, and especially us, the Blues. Yeah. All of a sudden, the people say, "How did the Blues women's team get on?" Yeah. Because we're a good team. Yeah. You know, and all the pe people are asking, asking, "How did we get on?" So it's brilliant. Yeah. And and to be fair, you know, I mean, I'm, I've been Who's quite. Bleeding? I've been quite critical of the. Um, it's all right. It's okay. Is it, I think we got a mouse. In, in the studio here somewhere but um, you know in the days of Golden Sullivan they didn't back the ladies they, they almost folded and, and, and to be fair to the new regime they have backed them they are backing them again Birmingham City ladies are one of the big big players in the WSL which does kick off on Sunday our first game is away at Chelsea yes which is going to be, uh, be a difficult game I mean there's there's uh, eight teams in the Super League they're hoping to kick it on and include a few more in, in, in years to come, probably get it up to 10, 12. It's very awkward because, as, as Rob you know, was just alluding to there, it's going to take time for mm -hmm. it to get on. It, it needs the, the media to back it. It needs the television. It needs the newspapers. And it really is a game in its embryonic state. And, and in time, it will. There's, you know, there's some tremendous players yeah, female players playing football. Well, you get you get the blues ladies oh, in the they, past. Oh, well, yeah. where, where, how come is it Doncaster ladies? How, how come they always do so well? Because it's Doncaster, you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> get money. No, no, no disrespect yeah. to Doncaster. No, I know you're saying. I mean, Donny Bell's yeah, a Donny Bell's Doncaster, Chelsea, yeah. All of a sudden, Doncaster. Yeah, I mean, Doncaster have always been a big player in, in the female game, going back to the old ga yeah. days yeah. of the Bells. Probably one of them, the first names that you would think in female football. But... You know, money has come into it a little bit. I mean, Liverpool now have got a massive budget. Doncaster are struggling a little bit. They haven't got that budget. And, and really what it needs is, you know, the, the, the male teams to, to, to back them. Um, I mean, if you're looking at a Premier League football club, if a five or a ten or eight your season ticket money went to support the ladies, that would make magnificent inroads. And with a commercial input to to the female game as well it it will kick it on to that next level i mean england ladies just a you know an example england ladies i mean many years ago were um would also runs i mean now 
they're big, big players. I mean, we've just beat Canada with a goal from Ellen White. That's uh, twice now we've beat Canada um, in the Cyprus Cup and in, in this game. And Rachel Yankee's just had her 125th cap. You know, so that you know these girls are, are really kicking it on. And what it does need, it, it needs people to get down to the stadiums and to back the girls. And I think that if the fans back them, the clubs back them, they all stick together. There's so much talent out there. There's only one way they're going to go up, is uh, up. And, and Birmingham City <laughs> are the number one in the female game. Hmm. Next home game. We've got uh, Lincoln, uh, Lincoln. I was going to say Lincoln City, mm -hmm. but it is Lincoln Ladies. Lincoln Ladies. Yeah, we've got them on the uh, on the twenty first, which is the day after uh, Frank Worthington's day. Right. So uh, we our games kick off at two o'clock at Stratford. We've got Birmingham City Ladies oh, in the studio next week. Just out of interest, it's yes. forty five minutes each way, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah, no, I just wondered like, whether they... I mean, they're, the, all right, you know, like, they, they might be girls, I mean, but they yeah, still play that. They, 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 have, they have free kicks as well yeah, and well, stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> There's no handbags that they put their handbags down <laughs> and dance round it and like, you know, it's proper football, mate. Handbags to goalposts. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. It's proper football. Yeah, gone are the days when the girls used to cook but, like their moms and they drink like I'll their dads. But tell you what, there was, there was, there was an article in, in, the, in the Sun this week that's wound a lot of... Uh, people in the female game up. Surprisingly enough, it was um, it was not put in any journalist's name. It was just a Sun reporter, and he was basically taking the rise out of the female game. And uh, he's, he's put a few noses out of joints. But you know, anyone that does go down there and watches them, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised. I think the standard is superb. And uh, you know, when you look at the fitness level of some of them girls, you know, it, it, it's it's superb. Every admiration for them. You are you playing hangman there, mate? No. Nope. What are we doing there? Do you want an A? I'm writing your death certificate. I'll have a B. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm witnessing it. Catch it. Yes, yes, All right. Um, do, do you right. think that with the current situation with the ladies' football, which, yeah. would you as a strong follower of the Birmingham Sea ladies like the money to go into it like it has to the men's? I, would, I mean, I, I think with the game of football, I mean, Rob will tell you the same. I mean, you, you do need money in football, don't you, Rob? Do they get paid, the ladies? They they get paid. Um, it's a semi-professional uh, so setup. Expensive. So they, uh, minutes each way as well, and it's forty-five minutes. Yeah, yeah so they, they so deserve they, to get paid. Them. To be honest, I mean, like, I mean, I've, been, I've loved blues for forty years, and um, you know, watching the men and watching the women. The, the disparity between wages and everything else is unbelievable and them girls deserve every penny that they earn you know I think the game is coming on they are going to be earning more money <laughs> but it re I, I still don't think it's it's a particularly livable wage uh, for them what they pick up I, mean, I, I don't know what they pick up but <coughs> I'm just guessing it, it's, it's not Karen's, an awful lot Karen's injury? yeah she's going to I think be out for some time really but say the, the guys will be in the studio next week and they'll be able to elaborate that right. find out next week if I've All got right, my yeah. mic back as well alright yeah. got your mic then they've got my mic then took it off me didn't I I got sacked <laughs> you know no, no. we don't go that again <laughs> well, I've heard that story <laughs> yeah but there you go alright um, Gab then just before we crack yes, back and get uh, some more info off uh, Rob uh, updates on uh, the big event we've got coming up in August yeah well we've got a massive game it's a, it's a football extravaganza are you coming down Rob is it August yeah I'll be yeah. there yeah, yeah. I mean there is a plane yeah, of course I will. Do you know what I think? I love 45 games. minutes. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know what I think? 45 miles. I think what we should do, because Tom and, and Broads manage the one team, don't they? Yeah, I they think, do really well. Yeah, I know they do. They're superb. I think what we should do is I should nick you for that game, and me and you will run the. Can I play team. for the ladies' team as well? We'll get a few <laughs> ladies involved as well. Have a word with your old man. I can't team. play 45 <laughs> minutes as a lady. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to be making a guest appearance with a pair of boots on. But just before we come, to, there, mate, just before we come to August, you've got a game on Sunday, and you mate. This yeah, another charity game. Tom and Broads are saw today at Starbridge. What time is that kick off, Rob? It's twelve o'clock kick off. Um, the address is Amblecoat Lane, is it? Yeah, I think yes. if you're coming down the Starbridge through the town centre, you, you yeah. come off, you go down that road. Typical taxi driver, ain't got a clue where he's going. And it's just on the left. It's yeah, Starbridge yeah. is great. You get a lot of ex players there, then, to be fair, nobody, nobody gets paid for it. We all yep. do it for charity. Nobody gets a and penny. It's all for the. Um, <coughs> How many that one? I'm not sure. We'll, well, certainly the one on Sunday. <coughs> uh, no, we don't know. But, but going back on to the August one, where uh, where we're playing the legends, 
it is for the Alpari Alpo, right, the charity. I think Bowen Bell are going to make a, an appearance as well. Right, so it's going to be a good family day. Yeah, we, what, what, we're, what we're doing is um, we're getting a load of fans to play the ex-legends. And uh, Who's managing? Well, I mean, Smudge are managing the one side. Oh I'm trying to get up to manage him because I don't think Smudge is up so much, to be quite honest. Well, Smudge has said that the uh, players have given Gabby a vote of no confidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that makes a change, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> but it is on the 25th of August. It's a bank holiday. We're going to do a sports radio uh, show from there as yep. well. Yep. And, and, you know, hopefully the, the people of Kingshurst, Chelmsley Wood, Chard End will come out and well, like back I say, us. Like I say, I shall, make a, I shall make a guest appearance on the pitch, but not for long. I prefer hey, microphones to football. You fans. will get a guest <laughs> appearance on that pitch if I pick you, mate. <laughs> the season will be starting again by then, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's well. Yeah. Well, like, Oppie, you're 51, I'm 51. We'll have a race yeah. around the pitch so he gets on, mate. <laughs> I think you will. I think you will. <laughs> Depends how many drinks I've had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dear. Okay, so that's it. We all up to date on, on all of the outside stuff then? Yeah, I think so. All right, yeah. okay, let's get back to it then. Um, oh, my missus was getting ready, though. She says, well, not big in this. I says, we are in a sixth birth caravan. <laughs> Where's that tub of weed again, honestly? It's jokes. Yay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're clean. Well, uh, they are clean. They are clean. They're it's awful, but they're clean. clean. Yeah, listen, I don't throw my microphone on the floor, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so after Blues, then, you uh, shot off to Shrewsbury, Hong Kong. What was it like playing out there? Uh, yeah, Blues, uh, I went to... Did I go straight straight to Hong Kong? Yeah, it's, uh, Shrewsbury first, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, Shrewsbury Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury. John Bond signed me at Shrewsbury to be honest, yeah. And um, he signed me, and the first day he signed me a two-year contract. First day I went there, he said, "I don't know why I've signed you." It's, <laughs> he said, um, "I don't know where to play." Uh, why? Because it, as you said, Gabby, yeah. the years before I'd played right back, yeah. left back, centre half. <clears throat> I didn't have a position, so he, he signed me. I think because Fred Davis was there at the time, yeah, and Fred was okay. And he said, "I don't know why I've signed you. I don't know where I'm going to play you." So all this season, I played again, left back, right back, and I was all over the place. So at the end of the season, come and John Bond said, oh, "Yeah, you know, I don't really need you because you haven't got a position." Yeah. So he said, uh, "Go to Hong Kong if you want." And I thought, "Well, great." So, you know. Didn't you think that, that, that was a bit extreme at the time? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, you know usually get sent to Coventry now. We, we, know, we don't want you to sign for any more Midlands clubs. Just go <laughs> to Hong Kong. <laughs> no, remember Jim Hagen? Jim Hagen. The right yeah, the Irish lad won. Well, he yeah. was over there. It was his connection. Oh, okay. And this team needed a, a forward. He said, whatever you do, don't say you're right back, left back, Sarah. You're a forward. Yeah. So I went to this Chinese stuff. Uh, and I got there, and I'm the biggest in the team, aren't I? So <laughs> they are the <laughs> tallest in the team. So. You're a ziggy. Yeah, and it was, a, it was absolutely brilliant. It was the best year I had a year there. All oh, right. But like getting into private things, I I had a bit of woman trouble. Yeah. So yeah. I had to come back. Yeah. Which was uh, somebody said, "What's the biggest mistake you've ever made?" I think forget the blues one. I think yeah. that was because I, I had another year contract in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But I had a woman, uh, woman trouble there, so I had to come back. So I came back for two weeks and tried to get back again. And the, to be fair, like, there was only people in Hong Kong who said, you can't go home because I've missed the semi-final. Because you can't go home and miss yeah. the semi-final. So they just told you to sod off. Like. But the, funny, the funniest thing in, in Hong Kong, we, the first game we won, so they'd that, bring a brown envelope in, so mm -hmm. you've won. Right. So it'd be $50 or so. So you've won yeah. a game, well done. But... They talk about gambling. So the second, the third or fourth game, we lost about six nil. And they brought this envelope, and it was about two hundred dollars. Oh right. We lost. It. That was uh, gambling, wasn't it? So obviously the owners had put us down to lose. Oh right. So we got a bigger bonus to lose. So. Well, I never, never <laughs> always been a little bit like that, didn't they? So it was a great movie. Oh, allegedly, 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 yeah. Allegedly. Yeah, the allegedly. lights go out. It was an well. absolute brilliant place. I'd love to stay there. That was probably my biggest mistake to be honest. Oh, right. Well, on the Hong Kong theme, then, I've just been uh, talking to my uh, my dear friend over there. Yeah, okay, right. And uh, so far, uh, what we know is is the Carson Young trial is, is uh, still scheduled to go ahead on the 29th, I believe it to be. Yeah, and, I'll buy when I see it. And there is an announcement going to be made this coming Friday. You heard it here first. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. All right. I won't be holding my breath. Yeah, the you don't. Like, no, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it could just be put off again. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it, it will be. be. But there's, there's, what I'm saying is, is that 
There's supposed to be an announcement well, made on Friday. Let's just wait and see. You know my scepticism with the current well, to be honest, I, stuff, I know I'm Johnny Palladino really well, and yeah. I'd love him to buy the club. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know it's not him, but I'm, John, he, he is a Blues fan. He yeah, used to, yeah. I've known him from Birmingham years ago. Yeah. His kids are Blues fans. Yeah, and he knows everybody. And he's, he's, if nothing else, it's nice to have local people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not so much money. Yeah. But like, I'd love Johnny Palladino to take over the Blues. But again, I put, you, when you're looking at the money thing, okay, people think, well, it's either like somebody like Man City's owners or or nothing. The, you know, there's a middle ground. There's there's a way of getting somebody like Palladino that's got a back in with a Not reasonable, millions, yeah, just just look reasonable after the amount. And, you know and they're going to look after the yeah, club. Yeah, manage the club properly. Someone that's got it. He's when local, I, he lives local, so he can't really, you know, mess the club up. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he lives, he, he doesn't live far from Solly Hill. Well, yeah. Well. I mean, he used to, um, I, I picked up him a few times when I was on the taxi. He's a nice He's an agent, yeah. one, many, you know, many times he was flying out to have a look at a player and with thoughts of he bringing him back to Birmingham He can't be any worse than what he's got now, can he? No, and I'll tell you what I like as well, the idea of Big Run coming in with him as a kind of, talking, uh, you yeah. know, what, what's your opinion of that? I agree, I think it's brilliant. Yeah, I do. Just as an advisor or whatever, I mean, why not? You know. yeah. I mean, Ron Atkinson must be. It's more local, is it? Yeah, Ron exactly. Atkinson knows every club, doesn't he? I mean, you played for Ron as well, didn't you? He's the, the, the only manager that's made me captain. Yeah. yeah. Made me captain. What was what was he like as a manager? He's good fun. He's a joker. Yeah. He's, he's exactly the same yeah. as, as he comes across. He's exactly the same. So, I don't know why they call him Big Ron. He's no bigger than me. <laughs> no, I, to be honest, I mean, yeah. he's he a big, that big yeah. isn't he, really? I mean, I'm, I've, I've interviewed him a few times and he, he's. He's a great bloke. Though, oh, tremendous. Great bloke. But I think it's more of his personality, isn't yeah. it? You know, and, and That's I think why the big Ron comes oh, his yeah. personality. Yeah. And I think that Ron, Ron could possibly, with Gianni, bring to Birmingham what we need. Similar to what Barry Fry did in them days. Well, there's, there's every chance that that's not going to happen, though. So well, probably not really. knowing our look, but there you go. Anyway, we've got three questions come through. So, uh, GA, if you're. Um okay, um, first question is. Um, okay, okay. Um, I, I'll have to read that one as well. Um, I'm Pammy, An Pammy Anderson, uh, the streaker up at Bolton. Do you remember? I do actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, Robert. Like, what, on that. What's your phone number again? <laughs> 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 he, 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 he just clip it on the end of saying, saying, "Did you fancy me?" But well, it's did you, Rob? What's your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's a yes. <laughs> I remember it well. Yeah. Um, what does Hobby feel about the atmosphere now compared to how it was back in the eighties and nineties? It's, well, it's just not there, is it? Every and you can't just say it's a blues ground. It's every nah, single it's ground, seating, isn't it? Seating, whatever. I watched the uh, Blues Villa game uh, when we beat them two one the other night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From the Blues archives, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harold yeah, 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 scored. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and the atmosphere you could just hear intense. it non-stop. Yeah, absolutely, you intense. know, scary, wasn't it? But, yeah. But, yeah. But then you get the Villa games, and it's back there. You know what I mean? Mm. I really missed yeah. the. Villa. I've never missed the Blues Villa game. Man, you know, never no. miss one, and. Mm -hmm. It's back. The atmosphere is back then, isn't it? You know, mm. but you go down Millwall. It's, it's never going to be the same. But people say it's just the blues, but it's everywhere, isn't it? It's it's the same, yeah. 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 The same, yeah. Uh, the next question is: uh, What does Hoppy think about the current crop of young players? I think they're brilliant. Some, some, uh, I think it's great. Mm. You, you got the kid who come on um, the Irish kid on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, we've we've got two or three, four of them. You know, um, some of them. They do look small, you know, because we mm. played um, Millwall yeah. and they were the biggest team in the world. Yeah. But I'd rather see these kids come through than paying whatever for mm. players who are there for six months and say, get lost, yeah. I, I, I wish we'd do it more. Mm. I, and I think if, not being funny, Paladino and Ron, Ron yeah. coming, I think there'll be more local stuff. But it's down to supporters, you, you've got to have patience, because the kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you've got to have a lot of patience. Yeah, and sure. uh, a lot of people say, "Yeah, we'll have patience." But and uh, after a few work games, the moment, but a couple of years time and yeah. keep them together, I think mm. we'll be alright. Yeah, but well, I think we got the nuclear. I think something is working. The we have got some kids. Doing well, we have yeah. got some. I mean, we got the Kobe, uh, the Kobe. Arthur that, that come on and, he, he looks you know, exciting yeah he looks yeah I think give him a few games under his belt he, he's too early yet though, well, of course yeah. it is you, look at, you only have to look at him say it's too early oh yeah a lot, of, a lot of people are moaning the fact that he could come on in such a high profile game but mm. I don't know chuck him in I it's the best way to look chuck him in my first game yeah. was 17 yeah, yeah. Probably, probably said who's that little pitch yeah. break with the blues badge on 
<laughs> but no, you know, at any age, if they're ready, just put them in and they either sink or they swim. But I, I think there's a player in that young man. Yeah, as long as we can keep them, though. That's a, you know, with the financial well, that's position. The thing, that's yeah, the, if the they do well, is. all of a sudden people yeah. want to sign. Like Redmond there, what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, yeah. that's why it's so important to uh, to get the ownership sorted out because everything else is, you know, you you don't really know where it you're going. It won't be sorted out on, fr on Friday. All I'm saying is that I do know that there's an announcement being made. Have we any idea what this announcement is likely to be? No. No, OK. It's not that Hoppy's going to sign no. again, is it? Hoppy too. I'll tell you what, Hoppy or Ziggy you up front, I'd have Hoppy. I've got a game Saturday at Stanbridge. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday at Stanbridge. Stanbridge. <laughs> I've got a question as well, that's alright. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, you, you carry on, mate. Yeah, uh, what's the uh, best team talk you've ever had and who gave it? That is That's a good question. I think it was me, probably, just that. before we kicked <laughs> in. <laughs> the most on you, can, I, can I say the most on you? I was saying to Gabby earlier, yeah. um, when um, Muhammad Ali, he opened the centre in Birmingham. Yes. Remember? I, I remember, he, he, well, he, went to Warwick. he went to Warwick as well at the same time. So And he late came 70s. in the dressing room. Late 70s, was it? He, like, you know, it must have been after no, that. No, it's got to be 80s. It must be 80s. About 83 onwards. <laughs> but all of a sudden, he walked in the dressing room, Muhammad, what more inspiration do you want? Yeah. And he, he he tried to give a talk, you know, he's slurring a bit, yeah. even then, but, but just for him to be there, but that's the most, you know, Mohammed, I've got, I've got his signature somewhere. But, that's but, worth a too. Yeah, but team talks, whatever, Ron Saunders always done it individual, he yeah. never give a, you know, he's come to, everybody's different, mm. but some, some of the most, well, I mean, Dave Bacar would just bored yourself, to be honest, yeah. so, people can drag on and drag on and drag on. But sometimes I watched that, you know, the Liverpool one. Uh, that was I've a bit never uninspired. Seen, yeah, wasn't I've it? never seen that. To be no. fair, that did program. You, did, um, what's it, the Liverpool manager. Yeah, it's really um, uninspiring yeah. now. <laughs> but every every manager is different, you know. I, I mean, I used to take that basis anyway. I was going to say you that. Just off, you just because hey, you know, when when you're just ready, there's a few minutes to you, you're going out and you're focusing, you're getting into the the zone. Yeah. Are you really listening to what no. people are saying, or are you just like no. blanking, like ready to go on the you pitch? You don't listen. You ever, but I, I think a lot of them now have the old head things oh, on that they listen. Really? To music, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think they just do their own bits now. So even if the manager is very, don't make that much difference because no one's <laughs> listening anyway. Yeah, it's a good question. But the, the weirdest one was Muhammad Ali coming in. Oh, God. Yeah, and also, um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Never wear a villa shirt. <laughs> Quality answer. Funny thing that happened at half time in the dressing room. Funny, any funny things that happened at half time in the dressing room? Not really. No, it's, um, half time. There's, there's what were you lot? There's yeah, half time. The best one is full time. The the day Villa beat beat. No, yeah, the beat us one. They Villa Park. Yeah. Peter Weeb scored. It was the day um, Broads, Steve McMahon. Yeah. He didn't break Broad's leg, but Broad's never played again after that. Yeah. He yeah. never played. So that was, um, we lost 1-0. I think it was a penalty. Blakey missed a penalty, didn't it? Blakey missed a yeah. penalty. <coughs> I mean, we must be struggling. Blakey's taking penalties. Yeah. I mean, we must be struggling for players. So, uh, full-time con. Uh, there's loads of punch-ups going on in the kitchen. Uh, and at Villa Park, you have to go upstairs yeah. to the change room. So the Villa players are going up, we're kicking them and, you know... So they went in the change room, and we're we're going in the change rooms. We're we're going mad. We are, and then they're, they're locking themselves in the toilets and everything. It was it was complete mayhem. <laughs> so, I mean, these days, you know, you yeah, they'd be complete. You'd be you'd be cameraed, wouldn't you? You know. Oh, without a doubt, you'd be up on it. But we was in their change room. <laughs> all of you, all of us, all the blues lads. <laughs> Because Broads have been stretching up. Yeah, I know. Steve yeah. McMahon, it was a really bad... Uh, Broads was never the same after that. No. Because a lot of us fans, we thought that that was the one that that, that finished Broads' career. But Kev was in the studio he was, and he yes, told yeah. us that, that, that it wasn't. No, he played again. Yeah, he that's right, yeah. yeah. But that was, was I mean, that was an awful challenge. Yeah. And, and st I mean, that was the f that was the first trial by think, television. I Do you don't remember think he got booked. I can't remember, but what I do remember, in front of us, we were all in the Witten end, and McMahon had come over to shake Noel Blake's hand, and Blakey nutted him and put him down, didn't he? Yeah, and McMahon then, said something about his... Well, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, allegedly. That's the story, allegedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but anyway, and Blake, yeah. Blakey nutted him, and then Gary Newborn but at carried Central... On up, Gary Newborn... They, was, they had uh, to give the video... He carried on up the steps and into their change rooms again, so we was... 
we was in Villas Jangerous for there <laughs> after. Well, probably around about uh, the, uh, the the same kind of time Baz would oh, have been uh, on the. Hold on, uh, we've just got to do something. Forza! So I just had to do a mad Forza. What do you think about the Forza group, Uppy? You know the atmos- the guys that are trying to get the atmosphere back to Birmingham City. I mean that's what this radio show is. It's like the Forza show. And uh, just say, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Well, first thing I said to you, the yeah. Villa do one. I don't, don't do one. Do we don't know of anybody else that do does one. They do, they do. Not like this. Brigada. Brigada. Brigada, yeah. Oh, I think. I feel, oh, sorry. sorry. I thought you were talking specifically about the radio. No, show. Well, 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 everything really. I mean, everything in the, general. Yeah. yeah. The, the old Lux. I mean, now we're uh, the, the you know, BCFC collective. We've got the Made in Brum, uh, the fanzine, the Made in Brum it's fanzine. It's all coming together. together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's all part of the same. Same experience. So put it the same back on you. What, what do you think about the crowds? Oh, I can't work out if they're going up, going down. No, we well, seem to get a good one. Yeah, I know. I think there's an absolute apathy, Rob. To be honest, I think. I that think. I, I think. Answer. Right. What's gone on uh, behind the scenes at the club has affected so I many think people a doubt. in such a bad way. Yeah, yeah. You, a doubt. You, 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 I mean, look. I love going. I love going. I think going. God. Have you enjoyed this season um, as a fan watching the football? <laughs> no. Have you enjoyed it? No. No, but so I'll what do you love about going? Thing. Just being there, it's, it's just the day in it, like, you know, you're going to the Blues, you're, you're going to stand at the top and look down and the, the green grass and the blue and white chairs and yeah. the smell of the burgers, the made in Brummage have come round the club. <laughs> it's just me day out, man, it's like, what I do, it's me life. I mean, I'll tell you what, I must admit, from all the years of, of watching the Blues, I'm more, I love the Blues more today than I've ever done at any period in my life, mm. you know, and... But it's like going to see a sick relative in hospital, isn't it? I love what's going on with the fans yeah, and stuff, yeah, yeah. but you, you know. Just, um, look, just look back, though. Just, just I'm a just year absolutely or so ago, bored. A year this or so season. ago when we were doing well, European football. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, uh, okay, we got relegated, but that's what we do. But we, it was, we win it a was cup and we get relegated. I mean, that's the, what happens. That's the blues, difference isn't it? is, what, I mean, what's your angle on this, Rob? I mean, mine is that it's almost the same squad that, that we had with one or two little additions. I just I don't think the manager's up What's to the, the job. What's the same squad? What squad? Well, it's very similar. I mean, you can it's argue. Miles away. It's no, it's not. Away. No, it's not. Well, how of much? Di- how much difference fight, is it? Fight, fight, I mean, we've, fight. we've got an Eng- <laughs> we've got an English <laughs> international goalkeeper. I mean, we got Curtis and well, Cornwall that played it. Well, I mean, he was <laughs> actually until we sold him, and now he's back on loan. The fullbacks are slightly different, but Caddis is an equal replacement for for Carr. Little bit of a problem at left back, but I, I quite like Mitch Mitch Hancock. So I think he, he's a, a solid player, and I think the Shane Ferguson, you know, I think he's coming. I think he's a, a good little footballer, and I think that we, if you've got Reval in centre midfield, I mean, it's a shame that Keith Fahey had been out for a lot of the season. You got Marlon King and Ziggich up front. You got Bert. You got Redmond. You know, you got Lovenkrantz. You've got players with experience like Ambrose at Kongen. This is a decent squad of players to play at this level of football, and I just think we're in this position, and we have been in the position, and I think it is largely down to the manager. Uh, I think if Christian getting, was just, managing, just, I just, think just, just getting back to Forza, Capo. Uh, well, you basically, um, I know Paul Smith likes uh, talking about Forza on a Monday, uh, used to be on a Wednesday, but um, since Forza had started, I've been back in them all the time and trying to get down the matches. Yeah. But, um, Realising that some people down the blues disagree with Forza, what why do you think that is? I mean, you you see the likes of Block Eleven singing that ridiculous yeah, in, song. In my, in my you're opinion, always right, going to um, get that, to be quite honest. Because you're right, it's it different. Is, straight down the line. Because you're situating the GM, right, mm-hmm. on a match to match basis, and the GM is not by nowhere any stretch of the imagination full. Right, it's empty. you are creating an atmosphere mm. with 30, 40 people, yeah. and it ain't going to work. It doesn't work. Hang on. Now, I will, I will not diss it, don't get me wrong, right? Because I think what you're doing is brilliant, mm. right? Don't get me wrong. You go the Tilton Road, I go the Tilton Road, right? If my boys go, they don't like the GM. They don't like it at all, not mm. one ounce. So I want to sit with them and have the day out with them, yeah? So we end up going in the Tilton. Mm. And... I think I think it doesn't matter where where you're from, right? But if that ground was full, yeah, you'd have the GM rocking. No, of course you would. You'd have the GM rocking, and that's the problem. Problem is, is is the attendances, mate. Well, what I'm talking about is like Forza Blues 
just basically wanna you don't have to like sit with us it's basically Forza Blues um, set this up to try and get an atmosphere down the Blues yeah. but with the current situation at the Blues Fair enough. We're trying as hard as we can, but we're just not getting the support. Either. Yeah, it's, I mean, to and be you, quite won't, honest, you won't get the support. Now, with an atmosphere, honestly, you're just you're, you're piddling into the wind. Yeah. Because because there is, and as Robert said earlier, there's not an atmosphere, and it comes from the playing. You know, if 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 the boys are doing well on the pitch and we're winning games and the crowds are coming in, the crowds are all and got something to sing and dance about. But at the thing. moment, you know, I mean, I'm bored. Restless, I'm to be quite truthful. Uh, just uh, just a quick word from Ollie. Who's with us tonight? Uh, hi guys, yeah, um, so I'm going to do a preview on the Leicester on. game. Um, on, yeah, so Leicester um, have got a lot of money obviously as we know, but at the moment it looks like they can be um, it can be a game that's potentially winnable. They've only won one game in 12, and in the last couple of at home games against Millwall and Sheffield Wednesday they've lost 1-0, and against Leeds they need a, a last minute winner, a uh, last minute equaliser, sorry. So and they've got also one yeah one in twelve it's awful isn't it they're poor uh, in a minute now yeah they got some uh, <laughs> yeah they've got some good players as well because of the money like Chris Wood that uh, we all know is uh, quite a good player uh, Kasper Michael as uh, we all know his dad yeah. uh, and Paul Konchesky used to play for England and David Nugent as well so yeah what do you guys think about Friday night. Um, my my years. honest opinion is I think we'll get beat on Friday. I'll pay. Let's, let's well, a week ago. And I, I rarely we, say that. I, I thought we'd be in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, me too, mate. Honestly, because yeah. we had um, who did we play? We had Wolves, and I thought, yeah. why not win a home? Yeah. And then we had Millwall, why not win a home? Yeah. And then we got Leicester, who haven't won for. Yeah, yeah. Twelve oh, games. Had we, and had then we, we got Bristol City on days. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. If we'd have won those two games. It would, but now it's all it's rocked. all gone, isn't it? Yeah. So mm. I, th I, th I think it might. We might just go there thinking the mm. season's finished. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. You know, I know you don't give up, but mm. but I was. I there's no way we're going to go down. People say, nah. say to me, "Oh, we might still get the no, no chance." No, you won't. Not on fifty. We're on fifty-three no points now. But there was always that chance a week ago. I was, I was oh. so optimistic. So Leicester is, it, I mean, it's on telly, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. Is it? But is it oh, this, this league is just so mad, isn't it? You know, you yes. get three wins back to back, four wins back to back. You're almost in the playoffs. You lose three or four back to back, and you're almost just in the relegation yeah. dog fight. It's a mad league, is it? Yeah. I mean, do you what? think, like, do you think the last two games that Blues have played have put a downer on the end of the season? Yeah, definitely. I think so because yeah. I was said yeah, before that I thought oh, I did. I was really excited proper after because we was top of the current form yeah absolutely we, we were on a roll we turned that corner I mean on the on the back of I mean again like you know Rob you've won a game four and as a player the, there must be the Palace game got me excited absolutely to be honest, the Palace all of a sudden I thought yeah. but, but as a player how do you feel I mean you've won four nil a game your next game you you're like a dog with a pair of them in yeah yeah it's, it's, we we. For twenty minutes each game, yeah. Wolves had twenty minutes, didn't yeah. they? Half yeah. an hour, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that can spoil your season. Uh, so I don't know what, where that comes from. That little half an hour yeah. asleep. It's just like Groundhog Day, any it? that, that defending without the ball, they seem to just switch off. And to be fair, if we if we was in the playoffs, I mean, where would we go? Oh. We, you you got to be honest, haven't we'd you? win yeah. it. Oh. We'd end up winning it, mate. Pro probably. Yeah. Imagine yeah. us in the Premier League. Yeah, but, <laughs> 17 players out of country. But that's what we do. That's, oh, what, that's how we operate. Uh, I only want to play the Villa, so we'll, stay, yeah. we'll stay back there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it, I mean, it, there's never a dull moment at the Blues, is there? Crack, you know, there's always something already. going on. It is, it is. All right. Um, right, we'd better motor on a bit. Anything else coming on the chat box or not? No, but I believe we do need to announce we the do. winner just of our to. tweet competition. The winner of our tweet competition uh, for the signed, I believe, uh, one eyed Baz book is a guy called Ray Hobro, and uh, you'll be advised and contacted by Twitter. Certainly will. Ray yeah. Hobro, well yeah, done. I'll, I'll be into that. Yeah, I'll follow him. Stuff. Sorry? I'll follow him, Ray. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Good Bad passion of Blue Nose. Oh, Marvellous. Uh, okay. Um, right, a couple of questions here for you. 
What do you think of the modern game and today's players? How long would it, how long do you think you would have lasted in today's game? I, would, I wouldn't have lasted very long. <laughs> Most of the players would have um, <laughs> trained it's, it's, it's a completely different game. It's not about Kevin Broder's tackle. Yeah. Steve McMahon didn't even get booked. Yeah. I mean, you get done for GBH in them days and they'll let you off. Nick's gone. Nick's gone. The game was Morning, completely changed. Nick's gone. Well, you have to adapt to the game. Oh yeah, I mean your your suspensions for a start, Rob. You you always had more points than the Blues, didn't well, you? By they Christmas, they used to they used to give you four points. Yeah, if you was booked or sent off, was six points or something. And the one season they used to send you the bookings through by post. The one season I was working out, I had, I had forty odd points, <laughs> and the Blues only had thirty two. <laughs> you were top of the league. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was in Europe. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> But it's only like the players. I mean, uh, one thing I also I've said to you going yeah. before. The one one thing I hate is people kiss the badge. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I re, proper supporters don't want. To, I mean, the most important thing is is not the name of the player on the back. It's it's the badge on the front. Yeah, that's one of my. I don't care about people. One of my favourite sayings to uh, uh, you know two footballers is. Uh, you play for the badge on the front and we'll remember the name yeah, on the back. Yeah, exactly. That's very true. Forget the name. That's I don't care about the name on the badge. You, you've but stole it off me, have you? Yeah, but uh, also, in, you know, in touching back in, you know, as it was back then, you you had a broken leg, didn't you, against Bournemouth? And, I mean, what kind of... Well, I never looked after it at all. You know, I broke my leg and... Yeah. I, I, I just managed to let him go at you. <laughs> from the back. Uh. Uh, but, but I got... I didn't get straight. Two stewards carried me off. And I went in the change room, no doctor, nothing, I've broken my leg and uh, I said, what do I do? They said, uh, the, the physio went back to watch the game. So I'm sitting there with a broken leg and my mate come in, I said, uh, what should you do? Said, I have to get a taxi to the hospital. I've got a broken leg, I'm still in my kit. Right. So I went to Birmingham Hospital. Unbelievable, isn't it? This in is from St. Andrews? Yeah, 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 yeah. Still in my kit. Yeah. And I said, um, can't fix your leg, uh, they haven't paid the bill, the blues. Oh, so it's private. So, so I had to come back and get a letter saying we'll pay you. Went back again. I said, well, they owe us, they owe us you, you, we can't do your legs. So I, I went to NHS and got it done there. Four hours away. I said, I mean, but again, <laughs> when you're asking the question. They wouldn't fix my leg because the Blues hadn't paid the bill. <laughs> the game back then to the game now, there yeah, is such yeah. a disparity. You, you know. Well, you've basically got an hospital on site now. Yeah, but you? I mean, we're, we're talking with Oppie then, like. You so know, I ended up, I think, at East Birmingham or something, like mm. a footballer. Imagine that now. Four hours. You sit in the East Birmingham and, like, Nathan Redman comes in. With a <laughs> it just, it's just a ridiculous situation so about players back they then. Left, they just left me. And also now, you know, since you've left the game. You know, you're in, you're in the, the the Blues legends and stuff, and you know, oh, Broads, Broads and Tom have, have looked after you. That's the biggest honour of my life, though. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I got voted into that. I mean, when you think the club's been going 135 years, how many players had thousands? Yeah. And there's 18 photos in the club's yeah. legends lane, and I'm one of them. Yeah. One of, one of 18. And mm -hmm. I mean, thousands of brilliant players. Yeah. There's been a lot of crap players as well. Yeah. Yeah, but like the honour when my my pictures on there, you know. But I again, can't believe it when I see. I mean, you're right, Rob. I mean, thousands of players, but not many that showed us your passion. Well, I'm not, when I, you I was never the shirt. best player in the world. Yeah. I'll, I'll admit that. Yeah. But <coughs> every game, I'd you'd give your best. That's that's all you should ask for. And that's all fans want. That's it. Yeah. That's all we ask for. And it go on there, wear our shirt, and um, and and do it for us. And and Oppy always did. Can you see the bubble, the football bubble bursting soon? No, I can't. To be honest, it just no. keeps going up. There's a mm. non-stop going up. Yeah. There's another. It's gonna. Is it increased next year? Hasn't it? The sky and. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every team now apparently gets more than Man City did for winning it last year. Mm. Next season. Apparently, your second That's and third ridiculous. division players are still on. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, proper money, hundreds, not thousands. Yeah. So I think they get mixed up. So. But the, the thing that gets me when I meet people, I say, oh, you're next football. Everybody thinks I'm loaded, you know. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> oh, you're next football. Go on then. What, you be straight. What was what was the most you ever took from a game? Five hundred pound a week. Five hundred pound. There yeah. you go. Yeah. What a quality guy. Well, Honestly, but, but you know, <laughs> perfect, mate. Brilliant that's, quality. That's what these guys Real used to earn in them days. When I went to Man City, five hundred pound a week. Yeah, that's the most I've ever. Most you went to Blues. I took a. 
I was on 400 the first time, or 350, but I took a cut the second time from West Brom. I was on five, 500 Man City, 500 West Brom, and I went to Blues for about 400, but they said you can have a win bonus for 100 to match your own. But I never got that win bonus, did I? <laughs> That's a big mistake, in the win bonus. Yeah, and then playing your right back. <laughs> but 500 pound a week, yeah. yeah. Well, Which, to be honest, yeah. 1981. 82, 82. That was, wasn't a, that was wasn't a, wasn't a, it wasn't a vast lot, amount of money. It wasn't, it wasn't a vast amount of money. Like, I'm not like complaining. I'm not complaining whatsoever. No, not no. at all. Not at all. I'm sure. But like in comparison to the sixty, seventy thousands yeah. that some of them get now, and the two and three hundred thousand some of them get now, a and week, a week. Yeah. Do we need that? And, a week? and let's be honest. Some Don't of start these, me, Gabby. I'll be no, but weeks. some of these players, <laughs> well, we, we can be here all night. We, no, we drop off yeah. up at the pub. I'd say five hundred pound a week. It was a lot of, a lot of money in there. Yeah. To be honest. But yeah. you know, they're, they're getting seventy, eighty thousand pound just as squad players. I wouldn't change days. a thing anyway. No, I and, change a thing. you know, I've never heard any player that would change because you played in the right. You know, in 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 an age where football was was pure and we could relate. Well, to I'm them. my deathbed. I'm not. You know, I play for the club of love and you know. You can't be fair in that. And not only that, we loved you while you was there. Of course we did. And we still love him now. Ladies and gents, one and only Mr. Robert Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Is that the time or anything? That is. God. Yeah,
If you would like to advertise on Sports Radio Birmingham, please email me at chris at sports-radio.co.uk.